Hello and welcome to Extra Connections. This is a special edition because we are not in the studio where I normally am doing the regular show, but I'm giving you specials throughout this time period of the shelter at home, safer at home stuff. And I got people I'm introducing you to, I want you to connect with. And this young man is somebody I want you to connect with because he's very interesting. In addition to being an actor on shows like Fuller House um, and, and what's the one, uh, Ruby, Red Ruby on YouTube, of course. He's done other things too, in movies and stuff. He's also a junior magician at the Magic Castle, which I think that is amazing. So I'm gonna stop and do an intro, just talk to him, Michael Campion. Hi, Michael. How you doing, man? Good, good, good. So I like to ask people, of course, just this is because we're at this time period, how are you doing during this whole Safer at Home style? Well, I'm doing all right. I'm doing, I mean, I'm, I've been, Aboard as most people are, but that's but that, but that's that, that's been okay because I was in Florida for um, almost a, a month and a half, so I got to spend time with my dad and uh, um, you know see friends before the whole lockdown happened. So that so that that was that was cool. Um, but yeah, you know I've been here reading, doing magic stuff like like you said, uh, finishing school because that's coming up soon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is this actually a year you graduate? This is not the year I graduated. This uh, that 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 will be next year. Right, I lucked out a little bit. <laughs> Just one year before. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for the folks who are graduating this year or they're graduating. I have so many friends year. graduating. Right, I have so many friends. Yeah, who are graduating this year, and it's yeah. so sad for them. Prom is canceled and stuff too. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, okay, you got another yeah. year. You're good. You got another right, year. Right, 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 right. Your fingers crossed. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Okay, I went, I'm going to dive into the magic because I want to tell you something. So, I'm a lifelong member of Magic Castle. My parents, oh, y'all, I have, a, I have one of those gold cards and everything. I wish I, I, wish I pulled it out and could finally show it to you. Uh, I'll, awesome. show, I'll show it to you one day. I'll, I'll post it. I'll show it to you. Mm. Um, but so I love Magic Castle. I think it's a great experience. Um, they have some great magicians. My friend Jerry Katzman is a magician there sometimes too. Um, awesome. And I just, I just think it's a great, my grandfather liked me magic. My brother liked magic. So how did you get into magic? I mean, like kids like magic, but how did you really get into magic? Sure, sure, sure. Um, well, that's a very, very fun story. So I come from a family, before I, I tell you about that, I come from a family of very uh, magical people, I'd say. My, <laughs> my, <laughs> like my, my aunt and uncle, um, they used to be professional clowns for the Ringling Brothers Circus. Um, now, wow. they are, now they are um, Santa and Mrs. Claus professionally year round. So he's like a real bearded Santa. It's crazy. It's really awesome. Wow. Um, okay. my, my mom, uh, well, I, I lived in Orlando, Florida, and my mom, she was the fairy godmother at Disney World. Um, so that was really cool, too. And when I was eight years old, my aunt and uncle, they gave me a magic kit. And I was, I was already, you know, I already had the performer gene in my blood. Like, it was, it no, just kind of cool. all, it was already right there. So, I yeah. mean, that combined with such a, such a cool skill, I got really good at it. And um, then when I got Fuller House, uh, it was kind of hard for me to like keep that up with school and stuff. So I, I, I took a break for a little bit. But then I heard about the Magic Castle and I was like, oh, yeah. So it kind of re-sparked everything. And um, I auditioned in uh, October of 2018 for the junior program. And um, yeah, the rest is history. So I performed there pretty frequently. So what is the, what is the junior program? Like what, is it, what does it entail? Right, right. So so the junior, so, so there's two programs um, and both of them uh are oh my god they're just amazing first of all uh but but the junior program is um anyone under the age of 21 uh who is allowed to perform during uh the, the weekends for like brunch shows because because yeah. they have dinner and brunch but brunch on the weekends uh since you know people can't perform under 21 during like nighttime because you know the whole alcohol thing uh and so you have to go through this whole rigorous audition process to get in. For juniors, it's way harder than it is for adults because adults, you can pay to get in. For the juniors, you have to like straight up audition. And uh, I think like they, they accept like maybe two out of 24 and that's like twice a year. So it's very, it's very, very small. It's very small. Congratulations. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. I know. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. Um, but yeah, uh, then every month we hold a meeting where we have a special guest come in and they talk about their magic stuff and we hold auditions to, because like once you actually get into the program, then you have to audition to start performing at the Magic Castle. So you don't, you don't start performing automatically. So you make your set, you do your thing. Um, they have an entire library down at, at the bottom, you know that of course. Um, and uh, you just get to network with all these amazing magicians. It's the best community there ever is, ever, for any magic person. <laughs> so 
that's exciting. And okay, so folks, okay, Magic Castle people, y'all know what this is. We're all talking like everybody knows what this is. Right, it's right. Holly, it's in Hollywood, and it's actually like a castle. Um, but it, you can you go in and you have your pre dinner. There's a piano that plays any song you want. You know that kind of thing. I'm always like, it smells like Teen Spirit. You know whatever. I try to throw it. I try to throw it off. And it always plays it. Uh, <laughs> and it always plays it. I should say. You know, there's a there's a ghost that's playing it. But it's very cool. Uh, you have drinks, and you go in and have a really really good dinner like a good expensive dinner like it's not some little rinky dink diner it's like it's some oh, real yeah. food um and then you go and you see a magic show i mean that's kind of that's, that's the whole thing and they do have brunches when i was a kid that's when i could go it was during the brunch times because you couldn't right go exactly go. um I, but i was with my parents and then we, it's like easter brunch and this brunch we go to those things and stuff but it's a really fun it's a fun night it's like it's like you know, dinner and a, and a theater. It's like, it's, it's this fun night of stuff and the magic's fun, uh, but it's here in Hollywood. So it's like right behind like Hollywood and Highland. It's right behind, it's a big thing, you can't miss it. Um, so that's, that's what Magic Castle is. But you have to be a member. Yeah. So you have to be a member, you have to be invited to be a member to go. Um, right. I said my parents are, were, and I got it from them and I became a member also, so that was kind of- Yeah, it's, it's very-, it's very uh, uh, Exclusive. Exclusive, that's what I was looking for. Um, yeah, you have to know a member and, and to, to get in. You can't just like, get a ticket it's 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 really yeah it's great so without giving i mean obviously i don't want to know the secrets i, li I love magic i love i love right. people, people want, I, whenever they have those special on tv like behind us i don't want to see those i i like the illusions i like that so in your opinion what makes a good magician wow that's a great great question which i have an answer to because i i think about this a lot okay. um i i do yeah uh you know a, a lot of the guys of the magic castle as it's technically great as they are like they like they can do crazy stuff and they can do all these crazy moves none of that really means anything if you don't put any meaning behind it like if you if you don't if you're not like a good showman um i'm not very technically inclined like i i know a lot of basic tricks i know like the classics but what makes my magic so good is that i am able to include my own personal stories and uh, tell a story through my magic instead of just doing a thing. Like I include the audience. I tell them about my personal experiences. A lot of it's based around um, that. And I actually have an entire routine based around my family, my, my magical family. Uh, so, so that's, that's very fun. Uh, but yeah, I think the difference between a good magician and a great magician is how well they can perform or tell a story with their magic. Cause that's like what a large portion of magicians miss, unfortunately. I like so. that answer. That's a great answer. And yeah. I I can tell you have it. You do. You have it. You know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank I, I you. I really can tell. Um, and I say it's a good lesson, I think, in anything in media and entertainment. I always say, you know, I've, I've been hosting for like 13 years. I love hosting. I love what I do. And I, there's a lot of hosts that do this. But I think why I stand out is because I really enjoy it. I'm really into it. And I give you, I give you something a little extra than just a, what's the next question? What's the answer? Right. What's the next question. What's the answer? Like that gets boring after a while. And exactly. Don't do that. That's fine. I'm, no shade, whatever. But I, li I like giving a little more. And I think that's in anything. If you're, if you're an actor, magician, you know, painter, whatever, that you give, you're giving a story to people. Um, yeah, people going the extra mile. Yeah, exactly. Really just increases the quality tenfold. It's amazing. Yeah. What, what was the first magic trick you ever did? Because you gave me that kit. So what was the first, out of that kit, what was the first thing you did? Do you remember? Oh, man. I remember it so clearly. <laughs> <laughs> it was the. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I thought I was a wizard. I really thought I was amazing. Um, they, <laughs> there, there was this, uh, there is this rinky dink little, little vase or, or, or whatnot. And like when, when you put a string in it, um, it like started floating by itself. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's so cool. Um, also, the, the little finger thing, they put your finger oh, in. Oh yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's me, guys. <laughs> so, so those two, I really, I was trying to impress all the girls. I was like, yeah. Well, yeah I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely was like in third grade. <laughs> so funny. That's why I love it. Okay, so now, um, so you, but you're an actor. That's, the, that's one of the other jobs you do. You're, you're an actor. And why acting? Do you like acting? I love acting. I really do. I, I, like I said, my whole family, they're, they're all performers. So I kind of, I, I, I can't really escape that. Honestly, it's been, um, it's been a wild journey. I didn't expect me to get to this point at all. I mean, I got into it because I loved it so much because I was good at it. And then my appreciation just grew and I started honing into my craft. And then I kind of, you know, got lucky with Fuller House. And now the only difference between now and then is honestly, I'm just, it, 
in the public eye. Yeah. I think I think that's really it. No, nothing has changed um, other than that. But uh, since then, I've made amazing connections and learned so much. Like like my appreciation for acting has grown so much more now that I've been on the show and seen how hardworking people are. Um, so yeah, I love it. In short, I love it. And I, I, love, I love your answers. Um, but I hear you bring up something that I want to kind of bring out. Uh, we'll go back to more of that in a second. But I want to bring up something. You have, I think I wrote this down, 620, 621,000 followers on IG. So what does that mean? You just mentioned how you're a little more famous now, but what does that mean to you? Like, what is what is social media like mean to you right now? Because obviously it's changed for you since you've been, you know, it's changed. Right, 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 right. Um, well, that is uh, a bit of a complicated answer, which I also think about a lot because a lot of actors are being replaced with like influencers who have more followers than the other kids. So like, let's, let's say I go into an audition and I do a better performance, they might pick the other kid who has like a million followers. And so that gets to be really frustrating. Um, but honestly, if that weren't in the equation, I would be um, maintaining it because I like to, you know, have influence. I like to be able to spread awareness about things and um, show people who I am, because it's kind of like, like this, like living resume of you know, myself and it's just this great platform for being able to influence. And it, it, I, I love it. I love maintaining it, but it also has big drawbacks when it comes to just the way people exploit it, you know? It does. It, it's really, right. it, it could be what you make it sometimes. I mean, it's up, it's up to you. I mean, it's like, you know, it's nice to have followers and fans and adulation, but you know, what also comes with it is haters and, and trolls. Right, right, right. It all, it all, it's all part of the territory. I mean, we're, I'm, on, I'm in public eye, you're in public eye. It's all part of the territory. And I've had to learn over the years kind of how to navigate that and go, okay, well, this is going to happen sometimes. It's not that right. serious, James. Don't let it get to you. But you have these folks over here who do appreciate you and your work. You know, just go that direction, kind of. Exactly. That, that and also a lot of people tend to be fake on social media. I, I think being as self-aware as you can, knowing that stuff and really like being like yep this is how it is this is reality instead of being like this doesn't exist i'm not gonna you know yeah. just be like hey guys like all right everyone you're in the all the same boat here so yeah how are you so you're so mature for your age how why do you think that is you seem so mature for your age mature oh my goodness thank you um well oh man uh that, thank you thank you for no, you, you see very saying good head on your shoulders and that's that's i mean you know you hear about child actors you hear about people teenage ad you always hear all that stuff but you still have a good head on your shoulders i can really tell i will okay well i i i, I guess when you put it that way the a, a lot of it has to do with with my parents i think that that they definitely raised me correctly um more than anything i think the number one lesson has just been uh be humble it just comes out of self-awareness and that's kind of like at the root of me. So everything else that comes out of that just spawns and I don't know. <laughs> Thank you though. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, did you know a full house? Did you, I mean, cause I know you're kind of young. I mean, did you know a full house, the original? So oh yeah. I, was, I, was I love full house. Yeah. It was on like Nick at night with like Fresh Prince. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It was cool. great. I loved it. Okay. So when you got Fuller House, we were like, oh my goodness, I'm actually going to be on a, like a legacy show. Like, this is like, okay, this is kind of crazy. I mean, you're playing one of the character sons on the show, one of the original right. characters' sons on the new show. Oh, tell me about it, man. That was, that was a trip. Like, literally uh, a 24-hour turnaround into this new life. It was insane. I, I had done like, like three or four auditions, and by like the fourth one, they finally released the name. And then I knew what I was getting myself into. I was like, this is like Fuller House. Like, I'm like DJ's son. Yeah. And, then, and then I went out for my final audition to out to California, and they were like, okay, you got it. Go cut your hair. Go learn the script. We're about to shoot right now. And I'm like, what? I'm not, I'm not even kidding you. Literally, it was a 24 hour turnaround. We're, we, we thought we were going to be there for like two days. And I was, ended up being there for like two weeks because they started production early. I, I'm telling you, it was insane. Insane. All right, so did you stay at a hotel? That Because you, you came out. You I stayed at, stayed at a hotel for two oh, weeks. Funny. Okay. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but on it, it, it's been, my whole life has changed. Like literally, my, my life is going in one direction. It's just a completely different path. A great path. Yeah. Um, and I've learned so much and it's been beautiful. I'm on an iconic show and that's just how it is. It's, it's great. Did, did any of the adults like Jody Sweeten or Candace Cameron, did they ever give you, give you kids advice on how to handle this or yeah. Like what's yeah, the, yeah, what's the yeah. Thing? I, 
I, I think it was less advice and more just the way that they lived that, that, that we kind of, you know, saw like, okay, this is, you know, you guys were on a show, this is how you guys are living now. And we kind of want to live by, by example. Uh, and same thing with the legacy cast, like John and Bob and Dave, uh, like Uncle Jesse and things like that. They, they also are, are really good role models um, because we all, we're all just like one big family. Like there's no drama on set. We all love each other. Um, uh, so not, not any like particular, like, Hey, don't do this or, or do this advice. Uh, but you know, example. Cause that went on what? Five seasons. Five seasons. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, yeah. That's, again, you lucked out because some shows last a season, maybe two sometimes. And then I hit it. the jackpot. I mean, this is an iconic show with five seasons coming out during my childhood. It crazy, crazy. Yes, definitely. Um, what is one thing that you have learned about yourself as an actor in the last, like, say, five years that you are happy you have learned? I'm happy I've learned. Um, well, I think that for the past five years, I've obviously been honing in on my craft, and Fuller House uh, taught me a whole different set of skills. But I, I think more than any of that, I've learned mostly about the business side. That was a big, that was a big shock, is just knowing – um, how much good and how much really bad stuff there can be. Um, and I had to, you know, adapt to that. I had to come to that reality and be like, okay, this is how I gotta, I gotta really tailor my social media. I gotta really, you know, talk to, I gotta network. I, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. I was like, what in the world? So that was interesting. <laughs> That's true. That part, you learned, you learned yeah. that, the lesson early. It's very, it's very true. Um, but then you're also on this other series uh, on YouTube, and it's on the, the Brat Network, they call it Red Ruby. So, is there, so you have comedy, you're doing comedy over here, Fuller House is comedy, but now you're doing this other thing. So talk about Red Ruby, because I don't know much about it. So tell me about that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, well, Red Ruby is on a, uh, a channel on YouTube. It's, it's relatively new. Um, and uh, they produce like short form content kind of deal. Uh, I was doing it sort of in, in between Fuller House, and it was a really oh, nice right. change of pace. Um, because, I mean, I, they, only, they only went one season. I'm not entirely sure if they're going to go for another one. Not entirely sure. Uh, but uh, it, it was really a nice change of pace because I got to uh, do what I like more, the, the more dramatic side. I feel like that's when my acting shines. Uh, but it's basically, it's like a teenage, like, vampire drama kind of thing. Uh, and I'm, like, the only, like, like, human who is, like, trying to make sense of all this stuff. And, and like, this vampire girl is take care of her and I almost died several times. It's great. I think I should go watch. <laughs> I love it. No, I does. It actually sounds like I have to watch, check it out and see what's you in it because it sounds interesting. Um, but how'd they come to you? How'd they, how'd they find you uh, for this project? Oh, Brett? The... Yeah, yeah. How did, did, did you audition? Did you get something? You read some somewhere? Actually, it, it was the craziest thing. I didn't audition for one of the... I, I was like, this is... It was a nice kind of like okay yeah. like they're calling me now like that's interesting um <laughs> i didn't let that go to my head though i was just like okay all right, all right. it's just it's, nice it's just very nice it's very yeah nice. It, it was just very nice to to have that because they um they generally have a lot of influencer kids on there and they were really trying to go in the direction of having more actors and stuff and i was like one of their first um i was one of their one of their first like kind of i would say trying out to have actors in there and it really became a success. And then a lot of my actor friends went on too. And, things. and uh, it's gotten on pretty, pretty well, actually. They're, they're doing pretty good. So yeah. and now there's, a, there's, there's a drama and there's comedy. So have you gotten used to the five seasons of doing this, the used, used to the, the whole kind of rhythm of comedy, of especially television comedy? I know it's very, it's very different. And there's very a different. Like, bump ups and there's all kinds of jokes. And it's like, so did you, get, did you get used to that? I got used to it, and then I went back after, and I went to go do other auditions, and I, I would say it like I'm in a sitcom, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> so it was so deeply engraved in me that I, I, I was like, I had to like break out of that, and that was just a few months ago, honestly, because um, right after Fuller House, I did a play. Uh, do, do you know of um, Do you know what a, what, what a panto is? Like 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 a panto play in Pasadena. They have anyways. It's they have these things, these like special events during Christmas time, um, and they were doing a, a play, and I got to play um, the prince in Snow White, and he was also a very like sitcom type character in this thing, like everyone was. So I did not catch a 
break on the on, on the on the comedic roles. So even right after that, going into the real world and doing real auditions requires a completely different skill set. Yeah, I'm sure it's because it's, it's, sitcom is a certain I mean, a certain camera angle. It's all it's very different than doing drama stuff or doing other comedy stuff. Doing comedy movies very different. It's, you have to talk a certain way. That's what's so interesting. Yeah, yeah, you have to be like a heightened version of yourself. <laughs> you have to learn the rhythm and things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so okay, so plays, comedy, drama. What would I, mean, I always tell people when I come to my shows, you know, speaking into existence, what would you like to see happen in your career? Just I mean, just thinking about it. I mean, I mean, of course your career will change and morph, but what would you like to see happen? I think I want to do a, a feature film, a dramatic feature film. Um, I love doing movies and I've been doing TV for, for so long that uh, that would be a nice change of pace for me. And also going into the direction of more dramatic stuff, um, like I said, that's really where my uh, acting strengths lie. And uh, I've been, I mean, I've been trying to audition, but with this whole quarantine situation, it's I been know. really, I know. yeah, ho Hollywood's pretty much shut down right now. So yes, that's so. going to be hard. Yeah. Um, but definitely, I don't, I don't have a specific idea in mind, but just that, whatever that manifests into, I would love that. Yeah. And then, of course, the, the uh, magician stuff. You can keep doing and that. The magi yeah, I'm doing Magic Castle pretty much. I mean, as soon as it gets back open, I'll, I'll be yeah. doing that again, too. Yeah. That's, that's so exciting. I am, I am a new fan of yours, Michael Campion. I am going to well, thank you so much. Follow your progress. And whenever you make some big moves, you have to come back on the show and we'll, let's talk about them. Because I think well, you, thank you, James. you have a good head yeah. on your shoulders. You have a good head on your shoulders. Um, tell folks where they can find you on social media. Yeah. Right. So I have uh, three platforms that I post regularly on. Uh, Instagram is number one. That's just Michael Campion. Uh, Twitter is next. That's underscore Michael Campion. And then uh, TikTok is just Michael Campion, straight up. So I'm on, TikTok. Those I'm on TikTok, folks. Yes, I will follow you on TikTok. Yes. I will follow you on TikTok. Yeah, I'm going to follow you on TikTok. I'm going to follow, follow you today. I'm going to follow you on TikTok. <laughs> See why? I'm, I guess I'm popular. I don't know what's going on. See what's going on. <laughs> and I'm James Live Jr. You can follow me. We're all James Live Jr. Just sold at James Live Jr. and all social media platforms. It's, it's across the board. And this show is on every streaming service. And it's on YouTube under GLJ Media. Everyone, please stay safe and sane during this time period. And, you know, just enjoy yourselves while you can. Thank you.